Today's video is brought to you by Candid. Hey, brother! Jay, one of the longest standing questions that I have had with the Harry Potter universe has to do with Albus Dumbledore's brother, Aberforth, and his connection with goats. This is seriously a strange one. It comes up anytime Aberforth ever comes up, and it's never explained at all. And like, I get it, that's okay. He's kind of an offshoot character that we only ever really know just by name. But still, just by the very virtue of being Albus's brother at all, makes him important. And so I always thought like, okay, when we start digging into this, we'll find the answer right away and it'll be interesting and make sense. But oh my goodness, was I wrong. This has literally been on our idea board for a video for three years. Just so many dead ends. But I think we may have finally found the answer. Guys, before we dive on in, I wanna give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Candid. Growing up, I was that kid that just didn't quite need braces, which was great. Except I've got this one too that just doesn't sit right. But that's where Candid can help. They make clear, comfortable aligners that are removable and best yet, completely invisible. So you can be actively working on getting your perfect smile without anyone realizing it. And the average treatment length is only six months. So if you have any major vacations or weddings or photo opportunities over the summer, this is a great time to go and check it out. I've actually got my start kit on its way to me right now and I'm so excited to try this out and if you would like to try it out for yourself for a limited time they are offering $75 off if you go to candidco.com slash scb again that is $75 off by going to candidco.com slash scb link is in the description down below in case you need a refresher, the very first time we ever even hear of Aberforth's existence is in Goblet of Fire when Dumbledore is trying to help Hagrid feel better that the world now knows that he's half giant. My own brother, Aberforth, was prosecuted for practicing inappropriate charms on a goat. That felt like I changed my voice like six times. I got a little piratey, a little Irish. Yeah. It was all over the papers, but did Aberforth hide? No, he did not. He held his head high and went through... <laughs> This is like five ages in a row. Yeah. He held his head high and went about his business as usual. Of course, I'm not entirely sure that he can read, so that may not have been bravery. I'm not sure I can read either. <laughs> but right there, out of the gate, is also this weird reference to his connection with goats. Also, this is like the least reassuring thing that Dumbledore has ever said. Ever. What is he going for here? Like, my brother should have been super embarrassed once, but he didn't know what was going on, so he was fine and you will be too. But then Harry's over there in the corner like, but sir, Hagrid does know what's going on. Oh goodness, does he? Oh, well, that does complicate matters. Yes. In essence, divided? Why do you constantly make no sense? But anyway, it does continue to show up throughout the book series. Like in Order of the Phoenix, when they're trying to find a place to meet to form the DA, they go to the Hog's Head, the bar in Hogsmeade that Aberforth himself owns. And at this point in the books, we the reader don't actually know that it is owned by Aberforth. But once you do, what Harry says about the place makes more sense. He describes it as, one small, dingy, and very dirty room that smelled strongly of something that might have been goats. To which I say, Harry, you've got an oddly specific sniffer. He's only actually mentioned once by name all throughout Order of the Phoenix, and it's when Moody is showing Harry the picture of all the original Order of the Phoenix members, and he describes him as a strange bloke. Which, to be fair, doesn't actually specifically reference the goats, but I've always kind of felt like it was implied. He's a bit strange, that one. Ah, yes goats. And basically he's not really relevant again until Deathly Hallows when we find out he owns the other half of Sirius's mirror, owns the hog's head bar, and that his Patronus is, wait for it, a goat. Oh, and he wastes no time at all in telling Harry that him and Albus's younger sister Ariana enjoyed feeding the goats with him. Kind of brags about it actually. Wh what is the deal, man? Like the only real way that this ends up being relevant to the story at all is that he is able to convince some Death Eaters that Harry's Patronus, a stag was actually his Patronus, 
a goat, but did we really need four books worth of like small setup for that? So why did you set up the goats so early in the story? You see, I needed a way to get Harry out of trouble. A stag can be confused for a goat. So for a long time, I had basically just resolved myself to accept that maybe there's just not that much to it. Like maybe his association with goats is not meant to do anything other than represent the disparity between Aberforth and his brother, Albus. On the one hand, you have Albus, the greatest and most powerful wizard of his day, always associated with the mysterious phoenix. This super rare and majestic bird, untamable, immortal, and full of all of these mysterious powers. What do you need, Bob? While on the other hand, you have Aberforth, who is represented by a goat, the exact opposite of a phoenix. Look it up, it's in the dictionary. A goat is a hardy domesticated animal that has backward curving horns and in the male, a beard. It's kept for its milk and meat and is noted for its lively frisky behavior. It's also the polar opposite of the phoenix. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. Point is, goats are common, non-magical, best known for that was a goat sound. But no, in all seriousness, there has to be more to it than that. So like always, when we can't find the answer to a question in the books themselves, we always tend to look to Pottermore or actual writings from JK Rowling herself to see if she's ever answered this question before. Pottermore has addressed this, not at all. Like, how is that even possible? There's an entire article on Celestina Warback and nothing on Aberforth Dumbledore. You are aware it's Albus's brother, aren't you, JK? To be fair, A Cauldron Full of Hot Strong Love is a classic, but I digress. Although it's not like she's never talked about it before. We actually found an interview dating back to 2007 where she was directly asked this very question. What were the inappropriate charms he was practicing on a goat? To which JK Rowling responded, how old are you? Eight. In that case, I think that he was trying to make a goat that was easy to keep clean. Curly horns. That's a joke that works on a couple of levels. I really like Aberforth and his goats, but you know Aberforth having this strange fondness for goats, if you read book seven, came in really useful to Harry later on because a goat, a stag, you know, if you're a stupid death eater, what's the difference? So that is my answer to you. So first off, goat horns are short and straight. Sheep horns are curly. So are we totally sure we have the right animal? Second of all, while that is an answer, I also feel like it's pretty clear that she's simplifying it down because the person she's answering it to is eight years old. But guess what? I'm 30 and I still care. What is the deal with the goats? And this is the point where I just started taking straight up shots in the dark to see if throughout history or mythology, there was ever any kind of goat that was somehow significant or important in any way. And at long last, I found something. Let me ask you, are you familiar with Ragnarok? I don't know the song lyrics to any songs. No, not that one. Although that one is based on the real thing. The real myth. Ragnarok is basically the apocalypse of Norse mythology. The cataclysmic destruction of the cosmos and everything in it, even the gods. The damage is not too bad. As long as the foundations are still strong, we can rebuild this place. Now those foundations are gone, sorry. So yeah, it's a pretty big deal and the preparations for this event don't just involve the living, but strangely also the dead. Yes, in Norse mythology, there is a hall in Asgard where people who have died in battle go to wait for the events of Ragnarok, where they will once again take up their arms for battle. This hall is called Valhalla. It's a truly majestic place that is inhabited by several strange creatures, one of which you might have guessed it is the noble, the magical, the anti-phoenix itself, goat. And this is no ordinary goat. It's called Hyrum, or as I like to call her, Hadrian, and she has a very unique ability. You can find her grazing on the leaves of, come on, Leroar? Leroar. Leroar is a tree that stands at the top of Valhalla. 
And upon eating these leaves, she can produce an unlimited amount of mead for the occupants of Valhalla. So basically she's the bartender of Valhalla, except the only thing you can order is mead, which is just so fitting because Aberforth himself is a bartender. And what does he feed Harry, Ron, and Hermione? I got food, said Aberforth, and he sloped out of the room, reappearing moments later with a large loaf of bread, some cheese, and a pewter jug of mead, which he set upon the table in front of the fire. And it gets even better. Hatred the Goat is responsible for all of the drink in Valhalla, but of course, everyone also needs to eat, right? I mean, we're preparing for Ragnarok here. We can't just be drunk. That'd be a short fight. Obviously, they would need food too. And wouldn't you know it, there actually is another animal who provides an endless supply of that too. Can you guess what it is? Because it's actually not a goat. It's a boar. And apparently it goes by the name of Safamanir. Safamanir is a cosmic boar, whatever that is, that is hunted, killed, and eaten every night, only to be resurrected so that it can be hunted, eaten, and killed again in that order. <laughs> hunted, eaten alive, and then, then kill, kill it. it. But not through the process of eating. And you might be saying, so what? But do you know what the sign of the hog's head looks like? <clears throat> Wild boar's severed head leaking blood onto the white cloth around it. I agree, it is a little more graphic than is strictly necessary. But the point is, it always looks like it was just recently killed, just like Shamananir. Do you guys see what is happening here? The hog's head is Valhalla, where the great army gathers right before the events of the end of the world. Hey, but Ben, doesn't everyone gather at Hogwarts? for the big fight at the end? Yes, excellent point, but how does everyone get to Hogwarts? Through the Hogshead. No, they are not the army of the dead, but they are all following their leader, Harry, who is the master of death. Oh, and also it's the original meeting place for the creation of Dumbledore's army, you know, before they start meeting in the Room of Requirement, which by the way, in case you've forgotten, has a tunnel directly to the hog's head. Oh, it all fits together so perfectly. And we're not even done. It gets better. Do you remember the magical tree that Hadrian the goat was eating from? Well, Hadrian isn't alone up there. There is one other animal that is also eating from the tree. Can you guess what it is? A stag. Are, are you kidding me? And what drink is Hadrian producing? Mead. And where does mead come from? Honey. And what produces honey? Bees. To which you might be like, bees? Well, yes, bees. Because what does Dumbledore actually mean? Bumblebee. So really the only question we still have left to answer is what were these inappropriate charms that Aberforth was trying on goats? And while I can't say for absolute certain, my best theory is that what he was attempting to do was to get his goats to produce mead, just like Hadron the goat. And while I don't think he was successful, I think that he actually becomes the goat himself, both in comparison to his brother and also the role that he plays in feeding the army of the master of death as they head into wizarding Ragnarok. And that is the deal with Aberforth and goats. For my question of the day, if you guys were in the wizarding world, what of the wizarding drinks would you get? Would it be like mead or butterbeer or fire whiskey or giggle water? Let us know in the towel section down below. And guys, don't forget to go and check out Candid. You can get $75 off by going to candidco.com slash SCB. Link is in the description down below. But guys, as always, thanks so much for watching. If you like some more wizarding world content from us, or if you wanna see how Aurelius Stumbledore was actually created by the Philosopher's Stone, you can click this video right here. Or if you want to find out what the giant squid was actually there to do, you can check out this video right here. Otherwise, guys, until next time, bye.